This is the O Review Podcast. O Review. Hi, my name's Dan Toms. I'm from the O Review, and I've recently been seeing some videos on YouTube, so I figured I'd try some of my own. I've been collecting Oakley for about eight years now, and as you see, I've got quite a few. Um, I just wanted to start going over some of the pairs that I have and go over you know, the stories behind how I got them, maybe add some additional information about the pairs themselves, as well as some general Oakley knowledge that I can hopefully provide to you. Um, I was inspired by iSpy0099, so I'd like you to all check out his channel. He's got some great reviews of glasses, knives, a lot of sorts of stuff. It's a very uh, awesome channel, so I do recommend you check him out. So I'd like to start off with the Oakley Splice, which is my first pair. Uh, my brother around the time had just bought a pair of scars, and at the time I thought it was sort of silly to be uh, spending that much on glasses. But after I tried them on, I really noticed a difference, so I was inspired to go out and get a pair of my own. So I went down to the local sunglass store, and I picked these up because I really thought they looked awesome. This is the Crystal Black Ice Iridium Lens Model with the FMJ Plus Orbital. There's a several models of, or several variations of the FMJ, which stands for Full Metal Jacket, which of course they can't use for copyright, so they abbreviate it to FMJ, but they do vary slightly, but this is the FMJ Plus model. Um, just to give you some basic information about the Splice, they debuted in 2002 with three models. There was the Ice model, as you see here, the Root Beer model, and the Black Chrome. Um, just as a word of warning, in 2002 to 2003, the black chrome was prone to peeling if you got sweat on it. A few years later, it seems to be fixed as I hasn't, haven't seen any problems since, but my brother went through about three pairs of uh, scars, and my friend's chrome splice completely stripped off. It just looks like a black, black pair now. So do be wary if you have a model of black chrome from the 2002 to 2003 era. So just go over a couple uh, technical specs here. The lenses are made up of two spherical lenses, which give you the XYZ optics. The icon is the thin icon, and there's several different icons types, so if you have any model with the thin icon, you can do swaps if you need to. Uh, the screws holding this together are T5 Torx screws, so if you want to do any customs, you need a T5 Torx bit or a screwdriver in order to take this frame apart. The ear stems will come off just by twisting and popping them out and then popping them back in. So. With the T5 Torx and the twisting method, you can make customizations of many different types of Oakleys, and I will show you those a lot later. I do have a lot of pairs of uh, Splice. Actually, 10% of my collection is made up of the Splice model. I collected all of the official colorways, and then I started customizing. So I've got a ton of those, and you'll see a ton of those in the future. So aside from the initial three models from 2002, there was also the Backcountry Store exclusive model, which had the gray lens, and then just a regular sort of a matte black uh, orbital frame here. One year later, Sunglass Hut and Oakley sort of had a falling out, but they patched things together by giving Sunglass Hut exclusive emerald iridium lenses, and the Splice was one of those models. So you will see an emerald iridium Splice with uh, one of the darker FMJ orbitals. Also later that year on eBay, I started seeing some fire iridium splices, and we weren't really sure where they came from. We weren't sure if they were fake or real, even though they looked uh, you know, somewhat real. Uh, we did end up finding out that it was an official colorway, so the fire splice became the next model in 2003. Later in 2004, another model came out from Murasaki Sports in Japan. This was a Japan-only exclusive. Again, we started seeing some on eBay. People started doing some crazy customs with it. I didn't really you know, like that too much because with something that rare, I'd like to keep it stock if possible. But I did end up keeping, uh, get, scoring one of the official colorways with the high persimmon lens. And later on, one of my friends in Japan actually mailed me one of the original boxes. So I was able to get that pair with the original box, which was uh, pretty cool. Uh, later that year, we also saw uh, another model, which was the, the JPM Juan Pablo Montoya model. It was very similar to this, uh, but it had an ice lens with a signature on it. Again, it had the crystal black frame, but it had a white chrome uh, orbital here, so it shined just a little bit more. It's a very cool model. It also came with its own box. Most of the boxes at the time were just a black model with sort of a, a black and white image of the glass on it. But this actually had a picture of uh, JPM on it, which made the box slightly different. 
There is one model out there that has his Colombian flag icons on it, and I'm still trying to get someone to give that or trade with me on that. But uh, there is one model out there with the custom icons, which is pretty cool. Okay, one year later, there was one final model, which was in 2005, which was the Matt Kenseth 24K uh, gold lensed model. Uh, someone found this online. There was only maybe like 100 of them or so. And as soon as we spotted them, you know, a whole bunch of people jumped on it. I ended up grabbing one for myself, one for my brother, one for my friend, one for another friend. Uh, the person online was like, you want four pair? And I was like, yeah. Uh, they weren't really selling for that much of a premium either. They were the same price as just a normal uh, slice. So that was really cool find. Uh, those were gone within maybe a day or two. Everyone jumped on those once they found it. Um, and those were just really one of the most, uh, more special pairs that I have in my collection. So that sort of wraps up uh, the splice. The, the fit is uh, somewhat snug. I'll give you kind of a, a look here. Uh, it really fits in your face nice. There isn't too much light leakage on the side. Um, you know, they're very light. It's the old matter construction, so obviously they're not really going to break on you. Rock solid. Great styling. I love the look at it. This really sort of epitomizes the, uh, the early 2000s design uh, style of Oak that Oakley had at the time. They really wanted edgy, they wanted sharp corners, they wanted to show off how they're computer generating all these models, and I think it really acts as a milestone in Oakley's history. So again, this is Dan Thomas from O-Review. I hope you like this review. I'm going to have plenty more in the future. Um, I'm going to start going through all my glasses one by one, starting from my first pair, moving up. I may lump some together because, you know, I like to say every model I have has a story, but again, some of them you know, end up being lumped together. So I might do a few reviews where I have several models. I may also do some reviews that just go over some general Oakley knowledge that you might find useful. Uh, I might, uh, a couple I've planned is maybe one on the different icon variations, maybe some generational changes between models. Um, there's a couple other people I'm going to give shout outs to in the future. They're doing a lot of good reviews between variations of more, the more recent models, which is excellent because uh, my most, I don't really have a whole lot of the more recent models. I'm mostly into the vintage, into the uh, maybe stuff maybe 10 years ago or more. And uh, that's really where my interest is. So hopefully you find this useful and I should have a lot more to share in the future. All right. Take care.